welcome back dear students today we will begin with 10th lecture of unit 1 dealing with fundamental freedoms right to freedom is one of the most important and widely contested fundamental right of the indian constitution right to freedom is further divided into following parts number 1 article 19 of indian constitution mentions six freedoms that are available to citizens of india first among them is freedom of speech and expression second is freedom to assemble peacefully and without arms third is freedom to form associations and unions fourth is freedom to move freely throughout the territory of india fifth one is freedom to reside and settle in any part of the india and the sixth one is freedom to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation trade or business one freedom has been deleted from this list that is right to acquire hold and dispose of property right to property is no more a fundamental freedom because by 44th amendment in the constitution the right to property has been deleted and it has been taken over in article 300 capital a meaning thereby right to property is not a fundamental freedom now it is only only a constitutional right however article 19 clause 2 imposes reasonable restrictions on freedoms given above reasonable restrictions may be imposed on right to freedom of speech and expression in the interest of sovereignty integrity and security of india friendly relations with foreign states public order decency or morality or in relation to contempt of court defamation or incitement to an offence second is right to assemble peacefully and without arms this right may be restricted in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of india or public order third one is right to form associations or unions this right may be restricted in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of india or public order or morality the fourth right right to move freely throughout the territory of india and reside and settle in any part of india may also be restricted in the interest of general public or for the protection of interest of federal rights fifth one right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation trade or business may have restrictions in the interest of general public the state is also permitted to lay down the professional or technical qualifications necessary for practicing any profession or carrying on any occupation trade or business now so far as freedom of speech and expression is concerned this right is regarded as the first condition of liberty <coughs> if you do not give me freedom of speech and expression then there is no meaning of my fundamental right of life and liberty it occupies a preferred and important position in the hierarchy of liberty it is truly said about the freedom of speech that it is the mother of all other liberties freedom of speech is the mother of all other liberties this freedom of speech and expression dear students is a very important fundamental right in our constitution it is indispensable for development of one's own individuality and for success of parliamentary democracy 
it is said that in a democracy the right to free expression is not only the right of an individual but rather a right of the community to hear and to be informed see the importance of this freedom of speech and expression that if i have a right to express something that right belongs to me individually but correspondingly this is the right of the community as a whole also to hear and to be informed the concept of freedom of speech originated long back in england in bill of rights 1689 which adopted freedom of speech as constitutional right and it is still in effect dear students the free communication of ideas and opinions is one of the most precious right of a man every citizen may accordingly speak write and print with freedom but shall be responsible for such abuses of this freedom as are defined by law definitely under the garb of freedom of speech and expression i have a right to speak i have a right to write a book i have a right to print my book with freedom but i am subject to reasonable restrictions imposed on this freedom as defined by law universal declaration of human rights everybody knows was adopted in 1948 this udhr also states that everyone should have the freedom to express their ideas and opinions the freedom of speech and expression is recognized as a human right under article 19 and has now formed a part of the international and the regional human rights law dear students freedom of speech and expression means the right to express one's own conviction and opinions freely by means of words of mouth writing printing making a picture or using any other mode and it thus includes the expression of one's ideas through any communicable medium or visible representations such as gesture or signs making a cartoon etc the expression connotes also publication and thus freedom of press is included in this category freedom of press dear students is regarded as a species of which the freedom of expression is a genus free, free propagation of ideas is a necessary objective and this may be done on the platform or through medium of press if you see preamble to the constitution of india the people of india declared their solemn resolve to secure to all its citizens liberty of thought and expression the constitution affirms the right to freedom of expression which includes the right to voice one's opinion the right to seek information and ideas the right to receive information and right to impart information both the, the indian state is under obligation to create conditions in which all the citizens can effectively and efficiently enjoy these rights supreme court in ramesh thapar versus state of madras held that the freedom of speech and expression includes freedom to propagate ideas which is ensured by which is ensured by the freedom of circulation of a publication you see the freedom of speech and expression includes freedom to propagate ideas and this includes freedom of circulation as part of fundamental right of speech and expression the right to freedom of speech and expression as per indian constitution means 
the right to express one's own convictions and opinions freely the word freely means including by words of mouth writing printing banners signs and even by way of silence sometimes you express yourself by means of silence you must have read in the newspapers that anna hazare used to express his ideas or his protests by means of silence see another face of freedom of speech and expression supreme court held in union of india versus navin jindal that hosting hosting the national flag by citizens is a part of freedom of speech and expression if i am unfurling and hosting the national flag it is part of my fundamental right of speech and expression then dear students the right to information emerges as a fundamental right under article 19 1a as a freedom of speech and expression because freedom of speech and expression are meaningless without access to information and under freedom of speech and expression there is no separate guarantee of freedom of press and the same is included in the freedom of expression which is conferred on all the citizens this was held in virinder versus state of punjab and sakal papers versus union of india and it was held by the supreme court that freedom of press under indian constitution is not higher than the freedom of an ordinary citizen that dear students now we will see the grounds for restricting these fundamental rights it is necessary to maintain and preserve freedom of speech and expression in a democracy so also it is necessary to place some curbs or checks on this freedom for the maintenance of social order no freedom can be absolute or completely unrestricted article 19 clause 2 specifies the grounds on the basis of which reasonable restrictions on the freedom of speech and expression can be imposed now these grounds are number 1 security of the state two friendly relations with foreign states three public order Four decency and morality. Fifth contempt of court. Six defamation. Seven incitement to an offence, and eight is sovereignty and integrity of India. <clears throat> Few leading cases to illustrate this fundamental right. People's Union for Civil Liberty versus Union of India. A public interest litigation was filed. under article 32 in the supreme court against the frequent cases of telephone tapping the validity of section 5 clause 2 of the indian telegraph act 1885 was challenged and it was observed that occurrence of a public emergency and public safety is a sign to a norm for the application of provisions of section 5 clause 2 the government can tap my telephone can record my telephone if public emergency or public safety is at stake only then section 5 clause 2 permits the government to record my telephonic conversation but not otherwise so if any of these two conditions are not present then government has no right to exercise its power under section 5 clause 2 so telephone tapping violates article 19 1a my freedom of speech and expression unless it comes within the grounds of reasonable restrictions mentioned in article 19 clause 2 now the second ground for 
restricting this fundamental right is security of the state. Reasonable restrictions can be imposed on freedom of speech and expression in the interest of security of the state. <clears throat> the term security of the state has to be distinguished from public order. For security of state refers to serious and aggravated forms of public disorder. For example, rebellion, waging war against the government of India, or the entire state or part of the state insurrection. And it was observed in PUCL versus Union of India by the Supreme Court also. Next ground for restricting this fundamental right is public order. This ground was added in our constitution by Constitutional First Amendment Act 1951 in order to meet the situation arising from Supreme Court's decision in Ramesh Thapar's case. As per Supreme Court, public order is different from law and order and security of the state. Then another ruling, Om Prakash versus Emperor from Nagpur High Court, it says that mere criticism of the government does not necessarily disturb the public order. You see, in NCR, the ARC government in Delhi, headed by Mr. Kejriwal, used to criticize the central government. And central government MPs used to criticize the ARC government. So this does not disturb necessarily the public order. A law which punishes the deliberate utterances hurting the religious feelings of any class has been held to be valid and reasonable restrictions aim to maintaining the public order. Then next example is Supreme Court said in Ranjit D. Udeshi versus State of Maharashtra, they upheld the conviction of a bookseller who was prosecuted under section 292 IPC for selling and keeping obscene books like a book Lady Chatterley's, Chatterley's Lover. So it is definitely my freedom of speech and expression to publish a book, but it should not be obscene. If the book is obscene, reasonable restrictions can be imposed and the person is liable to be punished under Section 292 of IPC. So in this case, the conviction of the bookseller was confirmed even by the Supreme Court. Then next ground for restricting this fundamental right is contempt of court. The constitutional right to freedom of speech would not allow a person to commit contempt of court. You cannot say that it is my freedom of speech and expression and I can say anything against Supreme Court judges, High Court judges, I can say anything. No, you cannot. The moment your speech transgresses in the area of contempt, your speech can be restricted. And this is the very good example of EMS Namudri Pad versus TN Nambia. This case was decided way back in 1970 by the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court confirmed the decision of High Court holding that Mr. Namudri Pad was guilty of contempt of court. You cannot exercise your freedom of speech and expression to such an extent that it may amount to contempt of court. So dear students, the net conclusion is that right to freedom of speech and expression is an important fundamental right, scope of which has been widened to include freedom of press, freedom of information, including commercial information. It also includes right to silence, right to criticize also. But this fundamental right of speech and expression is, however, subject to reasonable restrictions 
on the grounds which we have just discussed under Article 19, Clause 2. So, thank you very much, dear students. Thank you. God bless you.